In this InDesign video, I'm going to go over the basics of using the line tool, pen tool, and the pencil tool. So we find all three of these in the toolbox here on the left. So we have the line, the pen, and the pencil. So the first one here, the line tool, is really quite simple. It is what it sounds like. So to make a line, you click where you want the line to start, then keep your left mouse button depressed and you'll see you get this rubber banding effect and the lines actually attached to your mouse. So I could just pull out and you know, let it go, maybe something like that. And you'll see that I made a line at an arbitrary length and an arbitrary angle basically. So it's just a click and drag essentially. Now each one of these, if I just switch to my uh, selection tool, that black arrow up at the top, and click on it, you'll see it has a frame around it, just like uh, the shapes that we made in the last video do. And then you'll see that they have the properties shown up here at the top. So this is a four-point line, um, and it's a solid line. So just like the shapes, we can actually change this here as well. So I can make these thinner or thicker, and I can also change whether it's a solid line, a double line, dashed, and so on. And that same information can also be found in the stroke menu that I happen to have here on the right side of my screen, stroke. If you don't have that, remember you can go up to window and grab it out of here. So within this menu, you see we have the same basic information such as weight and then the type. But we can also change other things about our lines. For example, we can have a starting and an ending shape. So we could add, so let's say, a circle, and you'll see that right here to our line. Um, and we could do that to both sides or do something opposite on the other end. So if you were making diagrams and you wanted leaders and things like that, you can see how that would be pretty useful. We can also change how our lines align with each other in here, whether it's the center, the outside, or the inside of the line, and then how the end caps behave. For example, if it's blunt at the end, if it's rounded, I'll zoom in here a little bit using my magnifying glass tool. So that's a rounded end versus a blunt end or an extended end. You'll see that one comes out a little bit farther. So you have a lot of different options here uh, in terms of lines and how you want to use them. I'm just going to use my black arrow tool and just make a large box around all those and hit delete to get rid of them. When we're using the line tool, we can also click and then hold down the shift key. And you'll see that I have the ability to use this in that rubber banding fashion or if I hold on the shift key, I can make a perfectly horizontal or vertical line. I can also come right out at a 45 degree angle. And these are different types of things that you could change under the preferences. So it's really easy to create, uh, you know, lines and borders and things like that using the line tool. Other than the line tool, we have the pen right below it. The pen allows us to make curved or straight line segments. So with the pen tool now, and you'll see that there's some different options with the pen tool, we want that top one. If I click and let go, I've created what's called an anchor point. Then if I click up above here while holding the shift key, I can make a perfectly straight line like I did before. If I keep the shift key depressed, I could actually come around and make a shape through a series of straight line segments. So once again, that's using the pen tool, clicking, and then you just hold on the shift key and just click where you want the different line segments to go. So I'm just clicking and releasing on the mouse. If I want to make a curved line, it's slightly different. So in that case, I, I click where I want the line to start, click the second point where I want that line, or at least part of that line, to end, and this time I hold. 
it's initially making a straight line in between. And at this point, if I wanted to, like before, I could just be clicking and making straight line segments. But this time to make a curve, I'm going to click my first point, click and hold, and then while I'm holding down my mouse button, when I pull, you see that you get a curve. What we have here is our first anchor point, curving around to our second anchor point here, and then this tangent bar that helps us determine how the curve works. So if I have my pen tool activated and click again at a third location, this line is determined by that second point I made and now this third one. So you see that I have these two tangent lines. Okay, so I'll just get out of the pen tool quickly. Once we have, you know, a curve created, we can actually go in and edit it. If I use the black arrow tool, I can either hold down shift and scale this proportionally, or I can, you know, scale it out in one of these different directions. That's using the black arrow tool, and that's treating this as one entire object. If I actually want to get in and manipulate this curve here a little bit, what I need to do is use the white arrow, which is the direct selection tool. Once you have that, what you can do is come in and pick any one of these anchor points, and then I can grab that, and you see that I'm just grabbing that one point and manipulating it. I can grab the anchor point itself, or I can grab this tangent line and actually change how this curve bends. And this not only changes this point, but how it's reacting at the other end. So I can grab this point. So you see that if you're trying to create some sort of unique shape, you don't have to get it perfect the first time. You can you just get it close and then come in and manipulate it a little bit. Now that's working with the anchor points that I created initially. But I can also come in and using the add or remove anchor points and make the line more or less lumpy, less detailed. So within that you'll see that I have add anchor point for example. If I have that, what I can do is click anywhere on this curve and you'll see that I just added an anchor point. So I could add them you know, in a few locations just to show you what that looks like. And when you add more anchor points, initially it doesn't really seem like it changes much, but then once you get in there you'll see that the more anchor points you have the lumpier uh, your line can get. And that might be what you're going for. You know, that might be exactly what you want, so that's fine. But if you're going for more of a smooth curve, aim to have as few anchor points as possible, uh, you know, but still getting the effect that you want. You can actually remove anchor points. That's the one right below the delete anchor point tool. And then we can get in there and just click on any particular anchor point and it will smooth out that line in between. So once again with the pen tool, I'll just grab that plain one, we can actually combine curves and straight lines. So as we're working, you know, if I make a curved line, my next line is going to want to be curved as well. That's just how it's going to work because it's going to be working off this tangent line of each one. So at this point, if I want to make a straight line coming off of this curve, what I need to do is hover over that end point, click on it, and then I can make a straight line. Okay, so let's make another curve here. What I need to do is hover over that, click on it, and then I can hold on the shift key and make a straight line. What you're, con what you're doing is converting that end point from a curved line to a straight line end point. And that's really all there is to it in terms of the pen tool. It's a little bit tricky when you first start, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. And then finally, in terms of this type of tool, we have the pencil tool. That's the third one down in the list. So we have the pencil tool that basically acts uh, like it sounds. So the pencil tool is going to be particularly useful for doing organic or hand-drawn looking things. 
So I just freeformed Drew while holding down the mouse button and drew some line work in here. You'll see that when I have this active, I can actually go in and add to my line work here. So I'm just clicking on these anchor points. So I can add or remove certain areas with the pencil tool. And then as you're working, you can also use the tool that's right underneath, the smooth tool, and that will come in and just slowly smooth out your line so it's not quite so wobbly. If we zoom in there a little bit, you'll see that this one has a little bit of that jitter look to it that you get with a hand-drawn tool. And as I'm smoothing over this one, it's slowly but surely getting a little bit, a little bit softer. Okay. And then finally, we of course, with the pencil, have the erase tool where we can go in and cut through segments between anchor points and get rid of them if that's uh, something that you want to do. You can also, of course, just go in and delete if you want to get rid of the entire thing. So I have the line, the pen, and the pencil tool uh, to give you a lot of options when working in InDesign.